How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the year-end review 2016 here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses about the WWE No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter and join on the conversation by tweeting at No Holds Barred WP as well as you can listen and follow all previous episodes of the podcast on YouTube. Spreaker and Pod Bean. I almost screwed it up again. Pod Bean. That's what it's called. God, why do I say Pod Bay? I think it's because I have written here Pod Bay. Why do I have Pod Bay written here? Here, use my corporate I'm, I'm, pen. I'm use your corporate pen here to correct this. Scratch this out. Pod in big capital letters. Bean. I'm going to underline it 300 times here so I know it's Pod Bean for the next episode and not botch it become like a dana botch oh man but guys the year in review is here it's the first time we're ever doing one of these um i think it's gonna be a yearly thing we'll see what happens but uh we also have the slammies too yeah we have the slammies so go check it out if you've missed it i'm gonna upload on youtube i had got pretty pissed off from doing the graphics so you know what I'm doing one graphic, guys. I apologize. I'm just going to send it out there. It'll take way too long. Yeah. It just it takes way too long. You have no idea. With a slow-ass computer that I got, I don't got one of those corporate <laughs> fast-ass computers. You know, It takes we're, a while. We're not going over any matches today. You no. can well, you can follow. You can go watch the Slammies for that. Yeah. But, guys, the year interview, basically we're just going to you know, just review what happened in the WWE. And lots happened in the WWE in this past year. 2016 is a big year for the WWE. Um, probably one of the biggest I've seen in a long time. Uh, but yeah, it's a year in review show. We got, uh, we have your questions out there. I asked you to send us any questions for us to read on the podcast and we got a few. Um, what we are going to do though, before the show, just a small, cause we're not doing a lot on show this week. We're going to do a small recap from what's happened on, uh, raw and SmackDown this week. Basically raw was pure garbage this week. <laughs> Fucking absolute dumpster fire has become the official hashtag of this podcast. Absolute dumpster fire of a week for raw like it was just bad it was literally a copy and paste edition from last week they just tweak stuff around nothing progressed storyline it was just absolutely trash like i didn't even watch it we were watching the world juniors but then i went and like read it like i read the spoilers it was fucking atrocious and you were gonna watch it and i saved you a headache because that after just reading i'm like oh my god if this is as bad as what the highlight videos are going to be like when I go watch them, it was. I can't believe I actually watched the highlight. I wasted time watching those highlight videos. I feel sorry for anyone who sat through the three hours of that show. Like, it was garbage. They had already been on New Year's break already. Like, they were already Raw, packing their bags. Raw was bad. Like They were ready to just you know throw 16 in the trash and just whatever they could scramble together creative, they just threw out there. And it was just, huh. They Why ended, couldn't they, they take a fucking thing out of smackdown's book this week because smackdown was 10 out of 10 this week by far that was the best episode of smackdown i've seen since the brand split yesterday <laughs> or this week and then you <laughs> raw ends and starts with roman reigns in 2016 of course and betchy starts off next week actually you know what's probably gonna be goldberg next week as we now know goldberg's returning yay set up his uh little mini feud again with with brock lesnar heading into the Royal rumble great but we won't talk about Raw anymore. It doesn't deserve any no. more of our SmackDown, time. no. Fucking epic. Since the, first, since the start of the show to the end of the show, SmackDown was 10 out of 10 for me this week. It was 100%. fantastic. Um, 205 Live was also good, too. That was really unreal this week. Um, showcasing uh, Mustafa Ali in his hometown in Chicago. Looks like that they're going to do that a lot with these cruiserweights. But uh, the f- Neville has become unbelievable since heel turning. And he's definitely, as we said, as we wanted... And as we kind of predicted, he's going to be the head of that division if he goes to the division. And sure enough, he's literally the head of the division. He's like the Seth Rollins heel of the Cruiserweight division. And he should be. And he should be. And unbelievable Neville. Like, and the God. crowd's cheering for him as a heel more than they cheered for him <laughs> as a face before. He, yeah, he's become AJ Styles. The only thing I don't team. like is now he might not use the red arrow as much because that's more of a face finisher. Yeah, He's starting to use, I forget what he even used this week. But he didn't win off the red arrow. No, he didn't. I forget what it was either. 
Whatever. Oh. So it's the last recap for this week. Um, three title matches, though. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all three of them were good. The women's one was probably the, the worst out of them all, but yeah. it was tag team. Okay. Boys American Alpha finally winning the tag team titles. Wow, I did not expect Love it. that. I thought the Wy- I wanted the Wyatts to carry it for a little longer. I think they could have dragged out the Randy Orton with the Wyatts because they're so smoking hot right now. Yeah. With the Wyatts. Wait, and Randy we, I Orton. guess they saw too. Like it just proves right there. Randy Orton can get over on his own. Like, he was the only one getting cheered out of all three of them. They weren't training Bray Wyatt. Fucking, I can't yo, I can't yo. So, I guess they're ending the Randy Wyatt thing, but good for American Alpha, obviously. Yeah, and other than that, SmackDown was just awesome. The the, the title match was unreal. It just shows that Baron Corbin can put his weight up in in a world title match. Like the one spot with the 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 zigzag and the end end of of days at the the same same time. time. That was fucking amazing. Styles retaining, obviously. And then, fucking John Cena. Cringe worthy John Cena. I'm like, okay, I know he's gonna be back, but I hope they go somewhere different with him. Maybe they set up the Undertaker feud, nope. and they kind of teased it. But no, nope. John Cena comes back, instant title shot. Oh, we're back to status quo with John Cena. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll talk about that in one of our topics about outlook of 2017. Yeah. Um, so let's get into the interview, and we'll start off with your questions out there. Might as well. Uh, actually, you know, we're gonna start a little bit different. Uh, before we get to your questions, we're going to do a, basically a, a year overview of what's happened pay-per-view-wise for the WWE. And it's been a big year for pay-per-views, you can say to, le- uh, to say the least. I mean, we got to the brand split, and got- then we started seeing more <laughs> yeah. and more pay-per-views because Which- we got a single brand of pay-per-views. I think there's too many pay-per-views. Yeah. I don't like the amount of I think it should be, if Raw's going to get a pay-per-view, it should be just a Raw pay-per-view for that month, and SmackDown should get the next month, Yeah, and the third month should be the double-branded pay-per-view. Because it, it, as as we go into it, you'll see SmackDown, like, they got two pay-per-views right out of the gate after I made one of the big yeah, four pay-per-views. two weeks to book for it. And it, they, they did all right, considering they had two weeks, but yeah. it, I, I just think the amount of pay-per-views is too much. Yeah. So we'll go over, first we had Royal Rumble, obviously. With the 30 Orlando, Florida, and 30 Royal Royal Rumble, match. fucking Triple H coming Triple back, Triple H and winning. winning it, and you know, <laughs> mixed reviews on that. And the people just didn't feud. want Roman Reigns to win. <laughs> the worst feud of the year winner, Roman Reigns and Triple H, started from that. Yep, and then we got Fast Lane, this fucking pay per view, the greatest pay per view on it from the Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, Cleveland Ohio. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar. Yeah. I, see, I can't even remember it how if that was even good because it must have been bad because I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't remember them three having a triple threat match. And then obviously we had WrestleMania 32 at AT&T Stadium, Triple H yeah. versus Roman Reigns as the main event. Uh, worst. I don't know why that was the main event. It, that was one of the worst WrestleManias I've seen in a long time. Yeah, the only redeeming qualities of it was the triple threat women's match, the surprise of Zack Ryder winning the IC title, and the Styles and Jericho match. Yeah, that, was that was about it. it. What about John Cena and The Rock? No. <laughs> I, I left the room, if you remember, when yeah, John Cena came I on the remember. screen. Then we, uh, we had payback after that from uh, the All-State weird. Arena. It started with payback. They usually start with extreme rules. Yeah, and we had Roman Reigns versus AJ Styles. And they didn't turn Styles heel until after this, which made no sense. Yeah. But they had the whole f- feud with him not being with the club and then Reigns yeah. saying he's with the club and then the yeah. Usos got involved and whatever. And then that led into Extreme Rules, the exact same match as the main event, Reigns versus Styles again from Newark, New Jersey. I remember us talking about that going, why the hell are they copying and pasting the main event? <laughs> and then we had Money in the Bank, which was actually pretty good. Yeah, That with, ending uh, of Money in the Bank was like the highlight of that pay-per-view. Uh, Seth Rollins versus Dean Each Ambrose. member of the Shield holding the title all at once. And <laughs> so well, it went from Roman Reigns to Seth Rollins, and then yeah. Dean Ambrose cashing on Seth Rollins and beating Seth Rollins. Yeah, so it was Rollins versus Reigns, and then Ambrose yeah. cashing in on the same night. That was yeah. unreal. They made a plaque for that of all three Shield members holding it in the same night. God. And then we had Battleground after that. Ambrose versus Reigns versus Rollins. The, the triple threat that they rushed. Yeah. And then that was when Roman Reigns got suspended. So yeah. he couldn't even be, like, building up to this to this it's match. Cute. He wasn't yep. even there for, like, three weeks. Way to go. And then he gets title matches after that. <laughs> and then he got buried in the match, at least. Yeah. And then after that, we had SummerSlam at the Barclays Center. Oh, my God. Brooklyn. The worst main event I've ever seen. They should have, the main event should have been Styles and Cena. That won our match yeah. of the year, like, hands down. And, and then they and had it, Brock Lesnar versus Orton, Orton. Which fucking was just atrocious the, the feud actually leading up wasn't bad like they had orton invading Raw. lesnar shouldn't be and shouldn't be ending pay-per-views period especially okay? if he's gonna end it like that like he's not p- ending pay-per-view quality and i hate that they fucking bow down to this guy like he's the fucking god 
and it will be fucking drawing. He doesn't draw pay per views anymore. I don't know why Vince thinks so. People might still think he does. I honestly think he doesn't draw pay per views. The ending of the second biggest pay per view ended with Randy Orton just being there in a bloody pulp, and yep. there was no fit. Like it just ended. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, then we had backlash. Obviously, like we said before, first uh, SmackDown pay per view. First SmackDown pay per view. They had like two weeks to promote it. Yep. Yeah, because uh, uh, SummerSlam was August twenty first, and then backlash was September eleventh. Literally two weeks to, to to build for it. Like thanks WWE way to fucking hold yeah. SmackDown. They had Amber first for Styles, and, and it was Styles for, to make matters worse. It was Styles' first major championship win in the WWE, and he beat Dean Ambrose. And literally from that point, Styles was already elevated at that point. That just fucking sent them into the top from that win right there. And then he became the champ that runs the camp mm-hmm. SmackDown. Then we had. The first Raw exclusive pay per view, which was Clash of Champions, which was Owens versus Seth Rollins. It was all right. It was decent. It was all right, I guess. Then we had No Mercy, no Mercy. October 9th at, in Sacramento. Ooh. Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt is the main event. I don't know why the fuck The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler was not the main event yeah, of this pay per view. That was match of the night. That was fucking. That, that could have been a match. Of, that was not a match of the year candidate. It was. Yeah. My like like I said before in the review of that, my dad watched that pay per view with me, and he was like, <laughs> "Wow, that Ziggler Miz match was unreal. Why wasn't yeah. that the main event?" And that's oh, a guy that Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, yay! And that was a snooze fest. Yeah, and now they're team together. And now apparently they're not. I don't know. Then we had October thirtieth, the historic Hell in a Cell pay per view at TD Gardens in Boston. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte as the main event. Yeah. Obviously, it was. Yeah. You know, it lived up expectations. There are a lot of uh, unlucky. <laughs> happenings in that match yeah um i mean going back and seeing the rollins owens match that probably should have been the main event but i give props to the women for finally getting a hell in a cell match yeah. and main eventing a pay-per-view that was very hist- that'll be circled on a calendar for a long yeah. time uh then november 20th obviously was dear near and dear to our hearts survivor series at toronto. air canada center in toronto we were there yeah. and we witnessed the squash of, of the, the century, century. <laughs> the minute and 20 <laughs> second match of brock lesnar versus goldberg the pay the pay-per-view ending a half an hour early yeah uh that was interesting and we had the the team raw versus team smackdown which was which mm-hmm. was really awesome and then we got December 4th, TLC, which was the SmackDown exclusive in Dallas, Texas. Ambrose versus Styles again. This was the TLC match. Oh, and yeah, that's right. That actually was pretty decent, though. Yeah, that, until Ellsworth splash. ruined it. Yeah. And then Styles retained, obviously. And then lastly, we had Cockblock, uh, a.k.a. Roadblock End of the Line. Which Roadblock was, had two pay-per-views in the same year. Because we had a Roadblock WWE uh, Network exclusive in the beginning in of Toronto. 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H versus Dean Ambrose. Uh, and this one was Owens versus Reigns in the main event, and it got screwed over by Jericho. I, I, this was funny because people were criticizing that Roadblock was a they're, – uh, they're criticizing the double pay-per-views in one month. And people are saying that, oh, Roadblock didn't even have a Google search uh, for it during the time. Like it wasn't a trending thing. I'm like, you know what? If I, I went and typed it in, if you type in Derby Roadblock, it thinks you're thinking of the one at the beginning of the year. No wonder it didn't get as many clicks as it as it did, should have because people were trying to probably find this one and were clicking the one from the beginning of the year instead. <laughs> <laughs> this was just brutal, terrible. Oh, they had man. The, they really couldn't think or bring back another. Heaven forbid you bring back Armageddon and he called this Armageddon. Nope. And we had that uh, Roman no, Reigns be, get, the given another title shot with the U.S. title already. Against yep. Kevin Owens. Yeah, because that made sense. And uh, there was the end of the line for the Charlotte and Sasha feud. So... It is what it is. So that was the pay-per-view schedule for this year. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see what WWE does with the pay-per-view schedule. I want to see them bring back some other older pay-per-views and maybe yeah. get rid of some of these. Mm-hmm. Like Battleground should go. Um, and the line. Roadblock, Roadblock should, should go. go. Uh, to be honest, Hell in a Cell should go. Yeah. Well, like we said, that pay-per-view needs to just go and they just need to have a Hell in a Cell match somewhere else during the year. Like at like a, a Vengeance or an Armageddon or something and just yeah. have this Hell in a Cell match there. I agree. A clash of champions, like no one gives a fuck about that. <laughs> Payback, Ooh. Ooh. fast lane. There you go, fast lane. Get yeah, out of fast here. lane can go. I would 100 percent agree with that. But ending that, let's get into the interview. We'll go with your questions out there. We'll start off with a bang and get your questions out of the way, and we'll answer them to the best to our, our knowledge ability. and best as possible. Best possible, you know. I haven't read these questions previously, so yeah. I apologize if my answers aren't as thorough. Okay, so. We'll start off with Glory's Greg at Gillies929. He puts, what are your top 10 
WWE moments of 2016, and what are your top five favorite moments of your podcast? Whew. Top <laughs> ten moments is tough, man. Cause, yeah, like, a, I that's a lot to think of. Um, we're just going to think so, of some of the top of the head. We probably don't have ten. I think a top moment for me would be, obviously, Kevin Owens winning the Universal Championship. You know, my boy finally getting a major title. Uh, and I think another moment with me would be picking – uh, Zack Ryder to win the IC title <laughs> out of anybody. Like, no one picked him. I was the only one to pick him. Uh, another moment? Fuck, just this Jericho turn. Like, the, this Jericho push they've, they're they going with and how Jericho's turned it around and hey, this is the best work he's, he's ever had. The most, he's the most entertaining thing on television. It's crazy. And the brand split. That's another top one for me. Is the brand split literally was awesome. And I've been talking about it for years on this podcast and having, they should have a brand split and they finally did it. The NXT so, call ups. And I can actually watch SmackDown during the week instead of what if you guys what don't know, like to go do. to previous podcasts and I ran about SmackDown. My God, like I just gave <laughs> SmackDown zero credit each week. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's relevant now. Yeah. It gives it us literally a like a glorified main event episode. Like it was bad. Um but those are just a couple of moments I could think of. NXT call ups. Yeah. Uh Finn Balor. That's awesome. Baron Bailey. Corbin. Baron Corbin. Um, I've got a moment. We, we, just, we got a topic for that later. There's a lot. Um, um, <laughs> favorite most from the podcast. <laughs> God, we've been thinking. We were talking a lot about like doing a uh, just a, a little snippet video of just my rants, and, and like there's a lot of them, like with the headbangers and uh, you know some the other big rants, show, big show, just stuff I just <laughs> lose my mind over. There's probably some Sunday Night Heat episodes I've done where I just lost my fucking mind over, but. Uh, I can't really think of a top moment on our podcast yet. I think the top moment, but the and it's video. literally the only moment that's ever happened to us and is what's made our podcast as big as it is now, was our draft, our mock draft video that's almost has almost 50,000 50, views on YouTube and which put us at almost 400 subscribers on YouTube. You guys, we, we like can't thank you enough. We thank you every goddamn time we say this, but you honestly <laughs> don't know how it feels. And we went from like 20 to 30 subscribers and no, no one tweeting at us, like no one following us to now this. And it, it really means a lot to us. And, you know, we're not sitting here going, we – we're not one of these guys. Oh, we deserve better. You know, we should have millions of followers. No, we just we're doing this just for fun. Like yeah. me and we, we we when we made this podcast, we're like, you know what? We need, we talk about wrestling so much, and might as well just make a podcast to hell of it. You know, just get the word out there, see what people think, and you know, we 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 love the love, we love the feedback from you guys, we love the tweets every yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, literally, it's not like we we never get annoyed at by them. Never. Top so. moments for me: Sasha Banks winning the WWE Women's Title. Yeah, Alexa Bliss winning the SmackDown Women's Title, um, AJ Styles debut, Shane O'Mac's return. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it, Styles uh, debut is a big one right there, man. That's that's something I never would have thought I would see in WWE. Like ne- I would never thought Styles would have come back to WWE. Goldberg return was nice to see. Um, mm-hmm. The brand split, obviously. SmackDown going live is another big one. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be for um, me too. Yep, yep. And Return of the Cruiserweights. Yeah, Cruiserweights is huge as well. It's, big, it's, it's actually getting beam bigger I can and bigger think of yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, another question by Greg he says, "What are you looking forward to in 2017 for the podcast and from the WWE?" Well, for the podcast, I'm looking to maybe get some more followers. I don't know <laughs> what else am I going to say, man. I, 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 let me appreciate some more followers. I'm not making money off this thing, but I don't. I'm not looking to make money off this thing. But it'd be nice to get a few more followers and you know, for a few more tweeters out there to tweet at us. Oh, and, it'll be our first WrestleMania with all you guys because yeah. we didn't start getting you guys until yeah. like June. You know, like I'd, I'd have, I'd say like if I had time and I had the money to put in the podcast, I'd try to make it as bigger than it is right now. But you know, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And you got you look at the podcasters out there that have lots of views and like they they, they put do videos every they, day. They surround their life around the podcast. I can't do that. Okay, we we <laughs> both can't do that. Cover Cappy here in school, focusing on his career, and I'm trying to get my career going too. Man, it's just it's tough. If I had, if I was a millionaire, I would solely focus on the podcast 100. percent Maybe if I win the lottery one day, you know, the podcast would be bigger than it is right now. But f- looking forward to something in 2017. You know what? If I had to say something, just a few more followers. You know, just no, I just don't want to lose anybody. You know? just keep yeah. tweeting at us. Just keep keep supporting the podcast, and you know, who knows? You never know what could happen. I mean, that's with us. You never know what could happen. Look, we made a, a mock draft video, and it's be it's gotten us so much popularity. Because of it, it only has fifty thousand views. Like, that's not a lot, but to us, that's a lot. Um, For what we come from, yeah. And we used to use a like um, 
what do you call it, voice memo yeah. just on your phone. <laughs> you guys don't know. I want to let's let's go over that podcast wise. How we started this podcast, and if you go back and listen, you can tell. Now that I'm going to say this, we used an Apple iPhone four on a voice memo app, the vo- the, the generic voice memo app. And we just had it sit there. We had no microphones, no nothing, zero, zitch. We just were in a room. You could fucking hear the echo from, like, down the hall, okay? <laughs> There's some episodes you can hear my dog fucking walking around the hardwood floor. But, yeah, we went from that to now this. We we have this little piece right now that's plugged into our uh, NHBWP uh, Galaxy Note 3. <laughs> <laughs> that we renamed it. That renamed. Um, it's this little piece called the road sd6 google it if you guys must know the, to find this piece in canada is like trying to find a needle in a fucking haystack okay we uh, we called so many people in the states for this piece i finally found someone in the in canada to order it for me it was a music store it, it cost me like 60 dollars, and i had to wait like a month and a half for this thing to get shipped in when it finally came in you don't have no idea you can ask where we're happy i was like the happiest fucking kid in the world i was so for this tiny ecstatic piece. for this tiny piece that allows us to plug microphones into this phone and in finding the Spreaker app, which has been amazing. Like, a kudos to Spreaker. You guys are fucking amazing. The app you guys have created to record podcasts is just beyond me. Like, it's just, it, it's Thank free. God. It's a free app. And yeah. you, you pay to get, have an account, but it's a free app to have. It's, it's incredible. But again, like I just said, that's from coming from that to what we are now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing. And what I'm looking forward to 2017, who knows, man? Who knows? Bigger Greg? and better reviews. Well, Hopefully we'll, not we'll t- <laughs> not our WrestleMania review. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys want to hear something fucking hilarious, go to our very first video on YouTube. I wasn't even a part of and it. And the WrestleMania 30 review. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll put you to sleep within the first five minutes, but... <laughs> You got to everyone's got to start somewhere, yeah. man. <laughs> if you guys want to start your own podcast, yeah. go ahead. We'll follow it. Uh, as for your other question, uh, where are you looking forward to from the WWE in 2017? Pushing the right people is the only thing I'm going to say. You just got to stop thinking that bringing back old people and pushing them instead of the new guys. You're, you're, I'm fine with them bringing back old people. Just have them put over the talent that need to be put over. Don't bring it back and then shun those people. Like Apollo Crews, you fucking stick him in dark matches every goddamn week. Or when you have Big Show drafted over Cesaro. Yeah, like it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> just don't do that in 2017, WWE, and I'll be happy because I'm happy with the current product. And you don't know, make Raw better, but I'm happy with it. I, I have nothing They have the most it. talent that they've ever had on the roster. Yeah, it's one incredible. Time. I love it. I love the direction they're going to. It just needs to tweak it up a little bit more, and then you know what? I'm happy. I'll be a happy guy. You know, there's going to be those people out there to fucking critique it every goddamn week, like our boy JD, but you know what? That's JD, you know? He, he, got he can his do his opinions. things. He can do what he does. Yeah. But Raw's bad. SmackDown is really good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to more NXT call-ups. So, let's get some more questions. We got some. From our boy, Chuck Wilson. Wow. Sending us some questions. Yeah, coming out from under that rock. <laughs> I love you, Chuck Wilson. C. Wilson 3124 on Twitter. Go ch- go follow him and check him out. He puts, we'll start with the first one. Should Samoa Joe and Finn Balor form a cross-brand stable if Joe goes to SmackDown? Ooh. That's interesting. What? A club for a Raw. Cross a club ba- for that's like SmackDown. a first ever thing, like a cross-brand stable. Hmm. The Balor Club. You also have the club. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Does he mean Styles and Balor? Because they're the people with the club, not Joe. What is it if Joe goes to SmackDown? Balor's already on Raw. Oh. It's like a cross brand stable. Oh. You know what I mean? It's interesting. I'd like to see a club on both. Yeah, that'd be cool. A, a club on both, I think, would be the, for sure definitely the one to, to go with. Um, next question Do you think Bobby Roode will be in the main, main event or main roster world title feud in 2017? Yes, 100%. Once that guy gets called up, he's going to fucking suppress to the main like to the main spot in the main event level. There's no way they're going to fucking make this guy battle for the US title. No. He's not going to be mid card. There's no way. The guy's like almost 50 years old. He's not they're not going to make him go in the mid card for a year and then do the main title picture of the year after. He doesn't have much much time. They might do a slow build with him, you never know. No, they're not they're not going to. I guarantee you we see him in a main title picture in 2017, 100%. For me it's too hard to call, so I'm not going to The whole 2017 from like January to December, you don't see him at all in one main title feud. Not not the mm. Oh, he gets called up. Well, look it. Look where AJ Styles started, though. Look how. Yeah, but he wasn't that's called a up. Big, big gap. <laughs> yeah, but Styles wasn't in NXT. No, well, there's a big gap there. I think. I think he's gonna be in one. Hundred. I hope he is. I, I don't. Just... I don't see him not being. He's too over. He can't. 
Okay, may- maybe near towards the end of 2017. I'm calling by SummerSlam. SummerSlam will be in a main title picture. Whether it be on SmackDown or Raw, if there's a redraft or whatever, he's going to be in a main title picture. I see it. Okay. No, I'll, um, I'll say yes, optimistically. <laughs> Next question. He's got a bunch more here. Should we see a full-blown Shield reunion with Reigns turning on the team this time? Oh, and making Reigns go heal. That's a good question. Vince wouldn't do that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Roman Reigns is supposed to be the hottest face on WWE TV. <laughs> that gets freaking Vince and uh, Kevin Dunn like rocks off is Roman Reigns, man. Mm. <laughs> now, uh, that'd be interesting, though. Uh, I'd love to see that, but will it happen? Probably not. <laughs> I don't think so. He's just, Roman's Vince's golden boy. Guy can get suspended for taking steroids, and Vince will just shove it under the rug like he never saw it. That's it. <laughs> like Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Next question. Will we actually see Kurt Angle and WWE ring in 2017? I'm going to say yes because yes. of what I've read today. I hope so. <laughs> I've read today that he's actually telling indie promoters that after his last match with Cody Rhodes and Del Rio in March, he's heading towards WWE. So I think that's – but it, the reports that I'm reading are just Kurt Angle talking. This is not coming from WWE's people. This is coming from just Kurt Angle. So it, does, it's not, it doesn't look like it's confirmed with both parties. I hope so. But he, he says he's going to go. He's so, like the last remaining yeah. guy that needs to come back. Maybe, maybe Just for one off. Or be like the – 2K does yeah. the thing with him now with yeah. the video game. He'd or be on the you company. know I wouldn't mind being American Alpha's mentor because he was a mentor for the world's greatest tag team. So I would love to knows. see that. Uh, next question. Can Baron Corbin sustain a main event push? Yes. If WWE chooses to. <laughs> I, I think mean, I will. would love it, but I, I'm not the guy creating it. <laughs> I think they will because Baron Corbin was a homegrown guy. And you know Vince loves his homegrown yeah. oh, guys. He loves, he loves saying, that, oh, this guy, I didn't, he didn't come from the Indies. I didn't pick him. I, I started him from the Performance Center. That's why I think Baron Corbin will be something big in WWE. <laughs> you don't want Styles. You want, sh- no, Corbin. <laughs> Sheamus. <laughs> Sheamus is homegrown. Sheamus. <laughs> I, I say yes. I think Carol yeah. Corbin will. He has the potential to be a top heel. So yeah, that'd be great. I'd love that. Uh, he also puts. Um, well, my Twitter just crashed. Oh, fantastic! Give me a sec, folks. <laughs> we do it live on the air here, folks. We don't. We don't. We <laughs> well, don't it's edit not live. But we're, we're recording this live. Yeah, we, we don't know, edit. If, you, if that makes any sense. All right, I got it back. <laughs> All right, last question by Chuck Wilson. This is just an opinion, but I think it's time for Triple H to get his ass in the ring and finish Seth Rollins. <laughs> the, if it's, the finish the Seth Rollins angle, please. Are well, yeah, I- they 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 had that whole thing with the Universal Title. <laughs> Four months go by without anything after that. And then all of a sudden, Seth Rollins comes out of nowhere and says, I want Triple H. Wow. What? Did you just forget the last four months that he attacked you and cost you the Universal Championship? Uh, I think he realizes he has to take out Triple H and other people before he can yeah, get to I Owens. Guess. But yes, they should be finished. And it's probably going to be at WrestleMania. You know what else I want to be finished with this? Seth Rollins with the fucking pedigree. His pedigree is cringe. Yeah, well, we're going to have Battle of Pedigrees at WrestleMania. It's going to be Rollins Triple he need, H. Why does he need the pedigree? Why? He's not like he's a bad wrestler and can't think of his own finisher. I wouldn't mind if he used the Phoenix Splash all the time. Why can't he just go back using Mr. the Mr. CrossFit stomp? Jesus can pull it off every time why why why, but why does he have to use the pedigree like it's not yeah, it's not a face finisher no it's not <laughs> and he does it terribly <laughs> he does it really bad get rid of the pedigree that's what i want yeah. uh next question we got a question here from tony mercer oh at recram why not what is your favorite pay-per-view this year and why also which wrestler is the most overrated this year Okay, pay per views. My favorite pay per view. Whoo! Oh, we got the list here. The list of Jericho. <laughs> I'm going with. Uh, I'm going with. Oof! Um, it's, it's between two for me. I'm going with TLC. That's a good one. Or No Mercy, or Backlight. Any of the SmackDown exclusive pay per views have been good. Mm. I'm going with SummerSlam. It had the match of the year in it, and I loved Balor versus uh, Rollins. That was great. I you know, that like fucking Lesnar was the Orton. injury point <laughs> to where Rollins got hurt. But I'm picking SummerSlam. I don't know. I just, I'm going with a, a limit. I like SummerSlam this year. I'll go with Survivor Series because we were there. <laughs>
and it was good. I'll be, I I could say Survivor Series too. I mean, we we saw like, there were some great matches. Every uh, Survivor Series tag team match was good. I mean, we had the squash of the year, which is a big shocker too. So yeah, I could probably you know I'll change it. I'll go to Survivor Series. I'll go with Survivor Series. Got to see my girls go at each other. Yeah, there you go. And Mitch, yeah. the most overrated wrestler. Well, do we really have to think about this? Roman fucking Reigns I could is the most overrated guys. superstar on the roster. I, I might go with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, he's not the same beast incarnate as we had him back in like 2012 <laughs> to 2014. He doesn't even give a shit anymore. No, like he Goldberg was in better shape than Lesnar was for yeah, that match. I think he's yeah. You know what? That's because he's got off the fucking uh, cycle of steroids, which he got <laughs> caught for and is suspended by the UFC. And so he, yeah, I'm going with Brock Lesnar. No, I'm for changing mine to Brock Lesnar. As much as I want to say Roman Reigns, and he is fucking overrated. At least Reigns um, is there. Brock Lesnar, 100, percent 100, percent Brock Lesnar. <laughs> uh, another question from our boy Casey Salvis at Salvis 94. Appreciate the question. <laughs> when will Vince realize nobody likes Roman Reigns' heel turn? <laughs> I'm guessing that was supposed to be like no one likes Roman Reigns heel turn heel question mark yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah no one likes Roman I don't know why he doesn't I think he it. knows it but he doesn't want to admit yeah, he, just he doesn't want to accept you, you don't want you don't want you don't want Styles you want Roman Reigns yeah well, maybe he's maybe he's trolling us because he knows everyone hates Reigns so he just keeps that's yeah, probably to, it's, it's the the Mister McMahon laughing gift he loves that shit yeah. Uh, I I couldn't. I don't know why. I don't think they'll give him a heel turn. He's gonna be the fuck next Cena. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yeah see, everyone wanted Cena to turn. He never did. Great. For eight years, people wanted it. Never happened. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think that's where the road we're going down with Reigns. Yeah. Last set of questions comes from none other than. You. You love so. Good to me. Oh. That's right. It comes from that at real Michael Chow. Our Michael Twitter Chow fan of on the Twitter, year. our fan of the year, and there is his theme song that we chose for him. And he likes to be it considered uh, Chuck and uh, was it the, that tag team? Chuck? Billy and Chuck. Billy and Chuck theme instead of Rico. Is he not a Rico fan? Guess not. His questions. He starts off with thoughts on Cena's controversial "I did just do that because I'm John Cena" speech from SmackDown Live this week. That promo made him look so bad. Hashtag heel Cena. <laughs> it was kind of a heelish ending to the mm-hmm. promo. It, it literally was just like Cena. Huh, huh, the, the people that make fun of Cena, he's basically saying how it is. Like I'm John Cena, and I get what I want. Basically, trolling like, everybody. Yeah, literally, <laughs> not giving a fuck anymore. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Uh, I think it was really heelish. Maybe they're they're gonna turn heel, he see the heel. Maybe they maybe they're going to. Maybe they're finally gonna pull the trigger on it. Yeah. Uh, with Cena being part time now, is this the perfect time to turn him heel? This is the oh, this is almost the same character as the Rock's Hollywood gimmick. Mm. And being a hypocrite that he would never leave. And then he came back this week and he's like, people saying I'm part time and I'm washed up and I'm gone. I'm like, well, you kind of were gone for like yeah, three and months. Watch, guarantee you're going to be gone right after the Royal Rumble until WrestleMania, maybe. Or you're going to be here till WrestleMania and you're going to leave again. Yeah, it's kind of like The Rock when he said he would never leave and then he left yeah. for Hollywood and then yeah. they turned him heel. So he's a big fucking hypocrite. And I don't know why he's pissed about it because he is a hypocrite. You were just gone for like two and a half months, John Cena. Where the fuck were you? We couldn't you see you. Literally, we weren't even. You weren't even there for Summer Survivor Series. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to see Cena turn heel because what? What else does he need to do? Yeah, he doesn't need to really do anything. Come sixteen-time champion, of course he does. Um. Yeah, we'll move on. He says, uh, TNH show repeat question, which I uh, update on that, guys. It will be this Sunday. I couldn't do it last Sunday for obvious reasons. It was Christmas. So uh, the TNH uh, Sunday Night Heat show that you guys threw your questions at will be this Sunday coming up. So stay tuned for that. He puts, what's wrong with Raw and how would you fix it? Three hours is what's wrong with Raw, Michael Chow. And how would I fix it? Two hours. Done. Period. End of sentence. <laughs> and learning how to build storylines properly and not yeah. going from just like showing up at the arena. Okay, what are we going to do today? No. Build something a month in advance. Build yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Copy what SmackDown. I don't understand. There has to be two different writers for Raw and SmackDown. Because clearly. Or 205 how, Live. It, this is not Vince going, oh, wait, let's make SmackDown better right now. No, it's not. It's not. I guarantee you, Vince is in charge, is, is literally solely worried about Raw and only fixates on Raw. 
and just leave SmackDown to someone else. I really want to know who's actually controlling SmackDown because that guy deserves a fucking stake, man. He just needs made SmackDown so watchable and I don't want to watch Raw anymore. And 205 Live has done real well too. Yeah. Um, apparently, I don't know if that's true or not, that Vince and Kevin Dunn run 205 Live. I'm like, that's fucking impossible because this is a great show. And then Raw why don't shit. they do the same for Raw? Exactly. Um, another question from Michael Chow. How would you book... A Reigns heel turn. I'd have him win Money in the Bank and cash in on Ambrose on SmackDown Live like Ambrose did to him. Hashtag embrace the hate. So you'd have to get drafted to SmackDown. Yeah, so that'd have to be a redraft. So this would be like down mm-hmm. the line. But yeah, it's a good idea. I like it. Um, now the way Roman Reigns heel turn, I mean, there's uh, the one person that said uh, the Shield reuniting. And him turn him the one turning. That's interesting. I or him becoming that. Triple H's new authority boy. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, heel turn. Yeah. Just being the the new authority boy. What else are you gonna do to make him heel? Like, I don't understand. Turning on Rollins because Rollins is face now. Maybe. Going uh, off the other thing, Raw's just more entertaining. Like it's just it's more for casuals. I think Raw. Yeah. More than anything, it just gets people that don't watch the product often to just tune yeah. in and be like, oh wow, I'm entertained by these promos and this yeah. hot garbage we see every week. <laughs> Hot, this dumpster fire trash ass cringe worthy episode of Raw. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but anyways, moving on. Who do you predict will be champions at the end of next year? Okay, okay. So start off with Raw Universal Champion, Sami Zayn. I'm gonna say Finn Balor. All right, good one. Raw Tag Team Champions, the Club. Enzo and Cass. Hmm. Women's champion, Bailey. Sasha Banks. Okay. <laughs> United States champion. Because hmm. I don't know his schedule. I would have said Chris Jericho. United States champion, I'm going to say. I'm going to hope. Kevin Owens. I'm going to hope for Cesaro. All right. I'm going to say Kevin Owens. Kevin, I think he's going to fluctuate back to the mid card for a bit and then go back up after that. For the women's title, I was kidding with Sasha Banks. I think it's going to be Nia Jax. Oh, okay. So SmackDown, WWE champion. I hope Baron Corbin. I hope. I hope by this time he has a he's a full flux main event heel and he's got that title. I'm gonna say Baron Corbin. I'll say Styles still. I think he wins it back eventually, or maybe Cena. Oh. Anyways, in our Intercontinental Champion Ty Dillinger. I'm gonna say Paul, or Apollo, Cruz. Apollo Cruz. Yeah, one. I think Apollo Cruz seems better. Derby SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I'm going to go with your boys, Brazongo. No, I'm going to say Brazongo, reason. too. Yeah. I hope they get it. <laughs> Women's Champion. Eva Marie. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm going to say, I, I don't want to say it because it, it's making my mouth cringe. Nikki Bella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay with being a bliss fit. I'm going to say Alexa Bliss. Ooh, a bliss fit. God. So here are his predictions, Michael Chow. I predict Universal, Finn Balor, Raw Women's, Heal Sasha, and WWE World, Bobby Roode. Wow. And SmackDown Women's, Alexa Bliss. Yeah, he loves Alexa Bliss just like me, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are fucking We, we know the heads. sitch with the wim- The bitch, bitch that knows heads. the sitch, all right? And finally, since it is a year in review, here are some of the best hashtags from this year. Oh, God. Hashtag dumpster fire, which is our official, almost our official hashtag. That should be our official hashtag of Noel's Bar Wrestling Podcast. 2017, look out yeah. for that, our official hashtag. Hashtag save the smarties. <laughs> yes. Yeah, my Your smarties, smarties rant. rant. <laughs> hashtag worst of seven series. Yep. That was my favorite. <laughs> and we got a smiley face in the end of this one. Hashtag beat up Cappy. <laughs> oh, from our uh, boys, King, King Scampoli. I still don't know why he's got the hate for me. Uh, um, oh, there was another good one. It was like, uh, it was another one of the Cesaro Sheamus ones. I can't remember exactly what it was. Oh, yeah. Michael Chow, you'll go off, you'll go and find it for us. And yeah. Send it to us. Oh, my God. But that's going to do it for the questions, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always, and thanks for the love, and thanks for tuning in every week with us. So we'll get into the year in review, guys. Big year, again, as I said, for the WWE in 2016. Uh, some key highlights. We had the largest WrestleMania on record for attendance this year at WrestleMania 32 in Arlington, Texas. Uh, another key highlight, we had the brand split. So the first brand split in a long time for WWE and a much-needed brand split. Um, that's just to name a few. So we have a pile here of... Uh, 
stuff that's happening in WWE, I think it's we had around 18 or 19 topics here, so we'll go through each one here. Um, okay. Number one, start off fucking Roman Reigns, absolutely fucking trash. <laughs> like, absolutely cringeworthy. Epic failure of a push and drug test. And drug test. Throughout as, 2016. As much as I want to give this guy a fucking opportunity, no. They give him enough. He gets shoved down everyone's goddamn throats. Why Vince has a fucking boner for this guy? I'll just 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 gets right whew, right over my head. Roman Reigns does not belong in the main title picture. Did you see his promo this week? It he was said, fucking bad. He said he said uh, Braun Strowman. Um, I'm gonna get you back for what happened last night. Meanwhile, it was last week. Yeah. <laughs> What happened last night? What the fuck, Roman Reigns? <laughs> Did you guys go out last Did night? Did you have a live event last night and you forgot that was a live event and not an actual TV show, you stiff? He's just bad on the mic. Yeah. He got suspended and got instant title shot. How do you get suspended for a month and get instant title shots coming back? That's when you know that Vince has a massive boner for you is when you get suspended for a month or you could be suspended for two months. It doesn't matter. Come back because Randy Orton got suspended for two months. He came back and got instant title shots. I don't I remember him getting buried when he came back. But Roman Reigns literally was still in the match, even though he yeah. was suspended the match at um, Battleground. Yeah. And he's still the U.S. champion for whatever reason that they have backstage to make him still champion. He doesn't defend it. No. And when he defends he's it, like it's like against- Ambrose with the U.S. title. <laughs> What's with the Shield members not defending their titles? And it's the U.S. one. It's only what, they why are they burying the U.S. championship? They spent so much time in having the feud with Rusev and John Cena last year, and I, having John Cena put the over the title. And a year later, it's like ah, fuck that. You know what? Fuck. Yeah, Roman Reigns doesn't even show it when he comes out. He uses it as like throws it on his back. Yeah, he's oh yeah. Well, you're so fucking cool, Roman Reigns. You have it as like your backpack, man. Sick, man. No fucking backpack. Like, as much US as we title. give John Cena heat all the time, look what he did for the U.S. title. Yeah. He defended it every week. He had the U.S. Open challenge every week. Built that God. title up to what it was. You know what? You guys hear Rusev. me and I rant about this guy. He has potential to be actually someone good, but they don't use him the right way. They've chose to shove him down our throats, and they sit there and going, "Oh, oh, Kevin, why, does they, why like- are they booing him, man? Vince, what's going on? Why man? don't they like him? Hmm, I wonder why. Because yeah. we see him in the yeah. main title picture every week. He needs to drop the U.S. title. Give it to Jericho. Why Jericho did not win it from him on that Raw a couple weeks ago is beyond me. Why are they holding holding back from making Jericho the only wrestler he deserves it to have every major title in the WWE? He would have held every tag team title, every minor card, any minor card title, and every major title. Chris Jericho would have had them all if he won. He hasn't won the U.S. title. It's the only one he hasn't won. And if you're going to continue with Reigns and Owens for the for the Universal title. Then drop the U.S. title because it's it's not being used. And just Roman, look what Roman Reigns has done this year. Like he, he, we had the fucking retardedly cringeworthy feud with Triple H in the beginning of the year that led to the main event of WrestleMania being a complete and, hashtag dumpster fire. And it was the worst feud of the year. I won worst feud of the year for us because it was garbage. It was terrible. Who the hell wanted to see Triple H versus Roman Reigns? Especially the, the main event of WrestleMania. God, like no wonder Triple H got cheered. <laughs> And Reigns won it, and it was like, wow. And, and, then, he he, just, and then he went on to Barry Styles twice. Twice. Because that, that that made sense. And you know it just what? cringeworthy after cringeworthy let, after let, cringeworthy let me, let, me, let me calculate how many of the main like main events Roman Reigns was in this year. I'm counting the Royal Rumble because it was okay. him. As, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven. seven. So seven pay-per-views this year. Roman Reigns was the main, main evented, event. and he sucked through all of them. I, 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 I get what to say guy. on that. Like, Derry needs to relax on this guy next year. Just step on the brakes. I, I, I do feel bad for this guy at some point, but yeah. at the same time, there's no wonder the fans have so much backlash for this guy. Because they don't like him getting shut out. The only people that are cheering for him are little kids and, and the women. Roman Reigns fangirls. The women that think he's so hot. Oh my hot. god, he's so hot. Look at his long hair and he's all his muscles. Nah. Shut the fuck up. This guy is bad. <laughs> he's just trash. <laughs> his in-ring ability is just... Oh, he has four moves. Four moves of doom for Roman so, Reigns. He's just so... Oh. And then, and then he, they made him get rid of his... um. Armor like his uh, vest, oh, because it was hurting people. Fucking, yeah, why Oof. was why was he allowed to wrestle with the, like a you know protective vest on, but no one else was? 
Because it's Rome Ray. They're protecting him. All right. <laughs> uh, so we'll move on to the next topic here. And, uh, wow, big, big year for this gentleman. Huge year. And his uh, AJ Styles debut. Fine. The long time uh, coming for WWE to get this guy. Finally. AJ Styles is the GOAT, ladies and gentlemen. He is the greatest of all time. Oh, um, literally, he's up there. What he's done, like I know he has not much that much time in WWE, but what he's done before that, and his accomplishments since then, is incredible. And that's not his fault. He hasn't get called back to WWE in those years because they already know what the know what the fuck they were doing back then. Yeah, he's the only guy to hold the three major. He could have been back before the PG era, but no, WWE chose to go towards the PG era and said, "Fuck AJ Styles, we're going to the PG era direction because that's the way to go." I want to see him have another year or two as like a top guy in WWE before I can put him in the GOAT category. He's good, though. He's f- he's, up, he's, he's the f- best they have. Phenomenal, the co- pun intended. He's the best wrestler they have in the company right yeah. now, bar none. He's, made, he's just made a huge impact since his like, debut. His Royal debut Rumble. of Royal Rumble was Massive huge. impact. Came out against Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> Reigns looked at the Titan Tron and was like, who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the crowd popped for AJ Styles. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe they actually signed AJ Styles. And then that led into the AJ Styles and Chris Jarrett Y2 AJ, which lasted like one yeah, week. Yeah, the, the rare shirt that I still want to get, the Y2 AJ shirt that was on the shop for a week. And, and then they, they took faced it down. a new day, and then they went on to feud at, at WrestleMania, and Jericho buried, buried Styles. Buried Styles at WrestleMania. <laughs> Styles was the leading candidate uh, for Barry of the Year for the, for be- a while. For the first half of 2016, because he lost to Jericho, then lost to Reigns twice, twice yeah. in a so row. He was, he's getting there for Barry of the Year. He's getting there. And then finally, the brand split helped him yeah, get he back over. Yeah, he started John Cena. Because, Thank, and that yeah. was the feud, almost the feud of the year, man. And you had God. you had the club getting signed as well, but not being put with him right away. Yeah. And then they went to do their own thing, and then they joined up to team up and beat up John Cena. Hashtag yeah. beat, beat up, up John, John Cena. Cena. And that, that feud was awesome. Like that, the the feud with the club and John Cena that broke fourth wall, like that they broke the fourth wall so many times. That that was like the feud of the year. It lasted a month. It was a month long feud. It was the best build up I've ever seen. It was longer than a month, I think, because it was. Uh, remember, St- uh, Cena Styles beat him thanks to the yeah. club at um, Battleground, I think. Oh, okay. Or no, Money in the Bank. Yeah, it was Money in the Bank. And then at Battleground, it was Cena and Enzo and Cass versus the club. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And then they got their rev- – Cena won that one. And then this was basically the rubber match at SummerSlam, yeah. and which was the match of the year, Styles beating Cena. Yeah. And then we had the, the breakup of the club, which kind of sucked because of the whole brand split. Man, and they, they've, they've been shit since. They've been buried ever since. The club has been. Styles went on to be – the greatest thing yeah, on SmackDown. I, I love it. They still use the logos. Like the club, obviously, still uses theirs. And, and Styles, as we just saw this week on SmackDown, still has the club logo on his trunks. So the club is still alive, guys. I don't think they're I ever. I think gonna they die. really need to make a trade and bring the club over. Yeah, that'd be and great. I hope the God, the rumors aren't true that Vince wants Styles on Raw because no, he'll just get buried. It will ruin it. Then who's gonna run, carry SmackDown? Exactly. So yeah, as you said, after Brands play, AJ broke out even more. Um, became the champ that runs the camp and the face that runs the place for SmackDown Live. It's basically Just it. Incredible. Like, every week, this guy does something great. It's it sucks. Except, the press play was the the downfall for the the club and in general because the styles went up and the club went down. Yep. <laughs> and then you had the whole bullshit with James Ellsworth. Oh God. Being given like th- what is it two or three title shots against AJ Styles? He beat Styles three times. But okay, I don't count those as wins though. Like I, I count like they're wins, but like they're not credible wins to me because yeah. he didn't actually do anything to beat Styles at any of those points. Ugh, I just but the fact that they lowered Styles to face a jobber like that three times. Oh, thank God they, they after the year he's had they, they give him that. And I'm like they, really. Thank God they built him back up. But yeah, they in got the, him for a short amount of time to the end of 2016. And, and hopefully at his age, man, he still got it. Still got it. Hopefully it leads to something with Undertaker. I'm hoping he'll be in WWE for a while too. Like the next, they they re-sign him to a multi-year contract, which leads into like maybe a part-time deal with WWE, and he wrestles they need you know, him. a couple of they times a year. They, they need him around. Yeah. Um, hopefully it leads to a match with him and Undertaker because that would be an awesome match. Yeah, he's just point. so over. Like he gets over with every with with, with any crowd. He's just so good. <laughs> Like, you saw the pop he got in Chicago. I mean, Chicago's going to pop anybody that they love. And uh, they loved AJ Styles this week. 
beyond love. They fucking were crickets for Dolph Ziggler's entrance this week. Pe- people people say that they don't like his gimmick, but I, I like his phenomenal I love it. gimmick. I love it. It's great. I like his gloves and his entrance and Oh, his song's the best that. song I've ever heard. It's awesome. So, um, props to AJ Styles for this year. Probably being WWE's MVP as far as wrestling. Jericho 100% was MVP for entertainment. Yeah, but 100%. when it comes to wrestling, I think Styles won as MVP this year. Mm-hmm. So I'll move on. Uh, the return of Goldberg. Awesome. Twelve years. Twelve years since he's uh, been to WWE last. He was this year's 2K game pre-order character for WWE 2K17. And that led to the talks yeah. between yeah. him and Vince. Yeah, that led to the, the, the ongoing rumors of him returning because he's on the cover of 2K17. Or not the cover, he was the downloadable character. Of course, it had to be Lesnar on the cover because Brooke Lesnar gets to whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> um, he, then he had more talks with Vince and Triple H, um, which ended up signing him to a one-match contract. Um, then he rekindled his feud with Brock Lesnar with the uh, Sports Center shoot interview with uh, Jalen Coachman. Um, which I want the coach to come back. <laughs> coach to come back there to me, man. We need the coach. Love coach. Be like a side guy to, to Stephanie or something like that. Um, this leads into a month feud between the two. Uh, oh, really crazy return ass feud. Return to Denver. Like his first, I think it was in Denver. It was the first time he came back and yeah. he got a huge pop. Yeah. Was, Massive I, pop. I, I was really happy that he got a really big pop and um, he, he genuinely looked like he was happy to be back. Mm-hmm. He said he wanted to be a superhero for the kids and she going around like kissing every kid around the fucking arena, <laughs> including his own kid. And yeah, right, kid in the ring. Yeah. And then that rekindled the feud with Lesnar leading to the squash at Survivor Series. Oh my God. <laughs> that we were there witnessed for. <laughs> The squat, the squash of the year, under two minutes. <laughs> Fuck, just. Uh. And we find out after though that it was due to Goldberg getting injured during training. So, <laughs> of course he got injured. Yeah. Like 50 so that's years why old. it lasted under two minutes. And it was announced later on that both of them would enter themselves into the Royal Rumble coming up in January, and they are both going to be in the match. Okay. Um, I had a question here. Should Goldberg have come back and feud with someone else rather than Brock Lesnar? <sighs> Hmm. It's a tough question, eh? I, I I think they needed to have another match. Yeah, because of that fucking atrocious WrestleMania match. But then we had this. <laughs> we had a, 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 not even that much better match. If it was going to be this bad, they should have just canceled it. Yeah. And, like, delayed it or something. But now we know that this, they're planning on having an actual full-on match at WrestleMania. So, oh, well, here we go God. again. <laughs> Hopefully fucking it's... WrestleMania again. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have Stone Cold come back and be their special guest referee again. They're gonna fucking have a blast from the past match. Oh, hope not. God, if if he had to face someone else that, than Brock Lesnar WrestleMania, who would he face? Roman Reigns. Sure. Battle <laughs> of the Spears. I would have loved to see him squash Ryback if he was still with WWE. Oh my god! Because that would have been a hilarious. Yeah, thing. yeah. Because yeah, they used the, to the Goldberg, Goldberg to, to Ryback. Now we're not going to see that because Goldberg's or Ryback's officially done. With fucking he, hit, he has his the big guy thing coming out. Whatever yeah. the hell that Ooh, is. Fucking awesome. But yeah, we had the return of Goldberg after twelve years. So that was that was Goldberg. a big moment. Yeah, that was a good moment from twenty sixteen. And we're going to do another topic, another big moment for uh, 2016, and that is the new women's division. Yes, not women's. They are now be or not diva. They are being referred to as women's. The, the women's revolution. Yeah, the women's evolution. Actually, is being titled evolution. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and we, yeah, the divas title, that butterfly piece of garbage title, was replaced. Gone at WrestleMania by the WWE women's title. Yeah. So they had a, there was a semi slow start to this evolution. Um, in 2016, uh, at the beginning of 2016, but then it led to an actual really good feud between Sasha, Becky, and Charlotte into the WrestleMania match. Um, at WrestleMania, the division basically changed from them and went from diva to woman. Um, also, we got the the new introduction of guess what you said the new women's championship was absolutely beautiful. Fuck that butterfly title, we replaced that shit, and the new woman's title was just I we were just like wow, like lead introducing it in the WrestleMania pre-show. The it's WrestleMania special. match itself was epic. Uh, controversial ending. Nate, as we can say. Of course, Nate getting involved. <laughs> After that, everyone thought that it would be, uh, it would get like a massive overhaul. After this, everyone's like, okay, the women's division is going to get a massive overhaul. This is going to be it. We're going to love the women's division. We were Got wrong. Still. We were wrong. Um, it slowed down big time from After Us May. We got 
uh, like awful matches like Natalia versus Charlotte and Money in the that Bank. That feud went on for like two months. <laughs> like it was just slowed. Right, we were like, "What the fuck is happening here?" And no one else. Sasha was apparently injured or taking time off or wherever the fuck yeah. she went. She was gone for like two months. And we thought Bailey was going to make her debut after nope. WrestleMania, and that didn't happen either. It was basically Charlotte versus Natty for from like April to June. I think it was like April to June. Yeah. So that was bad. The, the, yeah. And then so for two months it was like. And then we had the brand split being announced. So that was yeah, a good right. thing. So at the end of the tunnel, we got a little bit of a light. So the brand split. So now we're getting two divisions. But even though we thought there was only going to be one division and it was only going to be just on the SmackDown. Like we were aware on the impression there was rumors going around that only SmackDown is going to get the women's division. But no, we split it up. And we did not think they had enough women to to have two divisions. No, and sure enough, we did. <laughs> and since then, SmackDown has been the better division. SmackDown introduced, Surprisingly, they introduced their women's title. Yep. Uh, and we Backlash. introduced uh, Alexa Bliss. There was a draftee. Carmella oh, wow. drafted from NXT. Uh, they had Nikki Bella, Natalia, Be- Becky yeah, Lynch. Yeah, um, Nikki Bella returned at SummerSlam. Yep. Uh, Becky Lynch became their first champion. Naomi got repackaged into like this uh, Feel the Glow gimmick, which has been now, big for her. And she's actually got over with it, but then yeah. they, they got her off TV the last couple of months. I don't yeah. know if she's been injured, she injured. or what. No, she they got injured. They didn't even put her on the, the Total Divas yeah. uh Sign. She, she had a lot of heat for that. And um, she retweeted us for... Uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, SmackDown's been a better division. Raw, absolutely fucking useless. They focus on two women for some reason. Sasha and Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, your girl Sasha, whatever. But it's wrong to just focus on two people for half a year. And they shoved this feud down her throat. Literally. I understand it was was a monumental feud. They did a lot of new things in this feud, but it's too rushed. And the fact that they made it last five months and with the amount of title changes they had in this feud, it was like... They made it seem like it was like these girls are never going to last, so they might as well get everything done now. It doesn't make any sense. Charlotte was a one-time champion and Sasha was a zero-time champion. After 2016, Charlotte is now a four-time champion and (laughs) Sasha is a three-time champion. Wow. What? That just happened. That's more than some people get in their entire career yeah. that we saw in six months yeah. of title changes. They just they, they booked it horribly. Yeah. The matches they put on were, were good. Yeah. Like They were good, but it, it's ki- it killed the Raw Women's Division. It gave no one else a chance because they were the main focus. And it's not like SmackDown focuses on everybody. They don't like – yeah, obviously the title is going to be the main focus in a way, but they, it doesn't – shadow everything else they, they had a great feud with uh carmella and nikki bella as a, yeah. as a secondary feud that was yeah. a great feud and they're still continuing to focus on everyone else they're focusing on this whole natty and nikki thing i don't know what the fuck they're doing with carmella and james elder for some reason but then you also got <laughs> becky and alexa on the side too battling for the title like smackdown's women's division is just way better and yeah. they have now this fucking masked person and people are going nuts saying it's not Naomi now and I can see it now not being Naomi. I can see it being Mickey James. Um, they're saying it's not Mickey James either. They're saying it's oh. this, this wrestler that WWE has just recently signed because they've matched the fingernails and stuff. Some gay forensic bullshit that people have been doing on Twitter. <laughs> people are really into this, eh? Yeah. Um, Anyways, just Raw the, Division has been useless in 2016. They had really Summer Rae, Alicia Fox... And then they called up Nia Jax, and she just squashed people for the first two months yeah. she was up here. Bailey finally had the call up, and then she didn't really go anywhere with it. Like I understand they want to they want to do a slow build with Bailey, which now she's going to get the, the next title shot at Charlotte. Yeah. Which I knew they were going to do a slow build with Bailey, but they should have at least had her doing something else. Yeah, like literally the rest of Raw's women's division is fucking useless. You got Dana Botch. Yeah. Oh you got goodness. Alicia Fox, who's now just Cedric Alexander's um, yeah. manager. It Basically, like. just pushed to two hundred five live now. Summer Ray, who got injured, but she was nowhere to be found. Nia Jax is apparently going to squash Sasha Banks now, which is going to be fucking just great. Emma Lena, who was supposed to debut a month and a half ago. And we had squash matches. <laughs> who actually matches. was a, a special guest referee yesterday, two days ago. I've seen the pictures. <gasps> wow. Zack Ryder's got... Emma, Zach my Ryder's, lord. Zack Ryder's got a lot to do at home oh, for the next uh, couple months. Oh my god, man. She is a rocket and a half. She, they revamped her. Like, God is her blonde hair. She's got like this burgundy like cream colored hair and she just looks absolutely gorgeous i know but is it gonna get over like i like everyone I loved know, her man. heel emma gimmick before she got hey, lana injured. got over with her looks <laughs> they huh? can get over with her yeah lana yeah she's not even considered a wrestler <laughs> yeah even though she's wrestled a couple of times in the live what the fuck why are they gonna let her do her her shit man what the fuck but yeah for the fir- like they literally had just date um Nia Jackson, Bailey, even Bailey was squashing like random jobbers. Yeah, for some for a three week period of time, Bailey was just squashing random jobbers. Uh, what? Why? 
Why are we getting introduced to Bailey? We know who Bailey is. They had the stupid, like, they did not build their secondary feuds at all. Like, no. like SmackDown did. No, not at all. And now we're going to get Nia Jax for Sasha Banks. I'm sure it's going to be just as cringe. Yep. So I'm not looking forward to Ra- Raw's women's division in the direction it's going. They need to get some people called up. They yeah. need to start putting everyone involved and yep. making some new stars because it, it's going to be in a, in, a, in a year from now we're going to be having the same conversation. It's going to be a fucking three person or maybe four person carousel between Sasha, Charlotte, Bailey, and Nia Jax, and that's it. I want my girl Paige. Real if Paige if she comes come back, back, hopefully. I hope so. But right now, it's just their division. When the brand split first happened, we thought, like, wow, Raw's division was so much better. Yeah. But then. No, SmackDown no. ended up being the better division. And SmackDown just being the better brand and all. It's the I think it's the flagship show. My opinion, as a wrestling the show. show. Yeah. As a wrestling show, SmackDown is definitely yeah. better. And we'll get into the NXT call ups later. Yeah. Moving on. Another return Shane O'Mac. Shane O'Mac is back. Wow. What, what, what a, a year Marco for him, moment man. for that. That was insane. In Detroit. The surprise return during the Mr. McMahon Legacy Award. Oh Stephanie giving it to Stephanie Give it to Steph. Shocker. Big fucking shocker there. Yeah, she's about to talk. Here yeah. comes the money. I'm like, no way. I, I'm sitting with Phil. Literally five minutes before that, I'm like, can you imagine Shane comes back? I told him that. And we're both live going, yeah, fuck that. Like, no, he comes back. I'm like, what? <laughs> The crowd all like went ballistic oh when he came God. out, and he was like tearing up. He was yeah. like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Like he said, didn't think he was going to yeah, get that kind of time. Reaction. He said he was back to run Monday Night Raw. Vince liked the idea, and he said he can only do it if he has a match at WrestleMania with the Undertaker. In hell in a cell. In hell in a cell. My God, in that match, whew, the epic jump from the cage at age of forty-six. Shane McMahon was able to do that. Unbelievable. The yeah the <laughs> the elbow drop from the top of the cell. God, that was our our move of the year. Yeah, and Shane failed to win the match. Shocker. But for some reason, ended up running raw with her sister. With his after sister? that, yeah. for the next couple of months, and which led into the brand split, and he was named the commissioner of SmackDown Live, and SmackDown has been better ever since the brand split. And we have Shane to thank for that in a way. Um, so just a huge return for Shane O'Mac. When was like yeah. 2009? I think was the last time he was there. The last time I seen him. Yeah, I think it was during the whole Randy Orton feud with Triple H and the Legacy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I so, think it was the last time we saw. But, but it, it 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 was a nice breath of fresh air to have Shane mm-hmm. O'Mac back as like a a good authority figure instead yeah. of this same Shane old authority and crap and Triple whole, H yeah. thing. And we and Shane's kind of like the the odd one in the family because he's different than all the rest of them. Mm-hmm. So it, it's awesome to have Shane O'Mac. Yeah, and it back. gave time for Triple H to go back down NXT and run NXT properly, you know, without having to focus on what he's doing on the main show as well. Um, this leads into our next topic of Daniel Bryan back in a different role. Um, in the beginning of 2016, in February, we had the sad sudden retirement uh, by Daniel Bryan, saying he's not medically cleared to compete in WWE anymore, um, even though he's been cleared now by every other doctor but WWE's doctors. <laughs> Um, many wonder what would happen with WWE from, from that point on. Uh, eventually, when the brand split happened, Shane needed a GM to run SmackDown and chose none other than Dan O'Brien. What a choice. And both have made SmackDown actually watchable since. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah. Daniel Bryan, I mean, he loved being in the business. And I mean, since he can't wrestle, well, being the GM is kind of the best he can do, right? Pretty much. And yeah. then we had Stephanie and Mick Foley running Raw, which that's a complete dumpster fire. Ugh, I but, think Foley's getting fired eventually. <laughs> but I, I've that's liked Daniel opinion. Bryan as a GM, and he's few, he's rekindled his all like his lifetime hate for The Miz. Oh, my God, yeah. They're, they're talking smack segment. It's still talked about to this day. And that happened like two months ago. It was um, like three months ago now. Three months ago, man. Like It was just such a great... Like, and I, I, it sucks they didn't do anything after that, and I know they can't really because he can't wrestle, but if he does eventually get cleared, I think it's going to lead to a one match with bet- between Miz and Daniel Bryan. Because Miz just... He's using Daniel Bryan's like moves in the ring now. Yeah, he's doing... He's What's like up mocking with him Daniel copying Bryan. people? He first started with Ric Flair... He had Ring Flair as his mentor. Now he's leading into Daniel Bryan. Like, well, he's mocking Daniel Bryan though with yeah. his with the yes. Yeah, he kicks wasn't mocking Ric Flair, I guess. Um, but I, I've liked Daniel Bryan as a GM, and I like SmackDown's authority figures better because we don't yeah. see them all the time. No, and we see Daniel Bryan talking smack, but he plays a good role in talking smack. And like Kim he's and like Renee. the guy, like all the guests they have in talking smack. 
they're there to vent their frustrations and the GM's right there and what better person to do it to and he books matches and like you know what I understand your frustration I'm going to book you in this match next week you know it, it's, Shane, it's such yeah. a good segment to have and I know it's being pushed back now because of 205 Live but they just, uh, yeah they always branded it as putting the wrestlers first instead of yeah. the authority first on Smackdown yeah. and I've liked that not we don't have we haven't seen Shane for a couple weeks now and I'm fine with that yeah. and we don't have to see Daniel Bryan getting involved every week unlike yeah. on Raw where we see Mick Foley or at least Stephanie every single week getting involved in something mm-hmm. like instead of letting the talent do their thing right. it's not focused on the the GM and the commissioners all yep. the time yep you're right and it that's why Smackdown again I'm saying it's a flagship show it's been better for me I I love it um so we've been talking about the last couple of topics here let's let's talk about it now the brand split finally Unbelievable. If you've watched our podcast from the beginning, we were calling for a brand split every single week. For two years, we've been wanting a goddamn brand split. (laughs) And we finally got one. So early in 2016, there were talks of a brand split happening. uh, But there are only rumors. Of Shane McMahon and Stephanie. Yeah. But there are only rumors uh, in the beginning of 2016, I remember. Um, There are lots of WWE teases here and there. But it was finally announced in May. This is where it finally uh, broke off. SmackDown. It was announced in May that SmackDown will be live on Tuesday nights. For the first time in history. Um, at this point, the split was going to happen no matter what now. Everyone's okay. It's going to happen now. SmackDown's going to, lo- to a live show. They're going to have two different rosters because they can't have both rosters appear separate nights on the live show. Um, this eventually it was announced uh, that there will be a draft on July 19th during Monday Night Raw. And the draft was okay. It wasn't the best. And like there were certain picks where like, what the fuck? Big like, again, show. Big show over Cesaro. But um, not even that. Like, the show lasted way too long. Yeah. People were just chanting, we want draft picks yeah. at some point during the show. Um, and it did, It just didn't look promising. The, the, the rosters didn't look promising. I remember we, did, we were like, our mock draft was better than this. Yeah. Um, so it didn't look good at first, but then, it, you know, it eventually elevated one brand, SmackDown Live. Um, Raw's first episode was actually the be- only good episode since the brand split. Like, from from start to finish. Yeah. They had um, the Fatal 4-Way, or they had the, the qualifying matches for the Fatal 4-Way. That to, were epic. Yeah, and they then that so led good. to the Fatal 4-Way yeah. with Finn Balor winning the Fatal 4-Way yeah. to be the number one contender. And then we had Sasha Banks winning the women's title against Charlotte, her first title. I got the plaque on my wall at home. Yeah. And but nothing since then. Raw has been garbage since then. Jericho has been the small light at the end of the tunnel, but it hasn't made the show good from start to finish. Like Kevin Owens won the Universal title, but it was in controversial and kind of tarnished fashion because he had Triple H fucking help him for yeah. it. And SmackDown Live has benefited huge since this brand split. 100% huge. It's been fantastic since then. It's definitely become the land of opportunity as they've uh, labeled it. And they went um, live on Tuesdays. Yeah, they've they've been highlighted by AJ Styles, uh, Dean Ambrose again. The Miz coming out of nowhere. Dolph Ziggler finally getting some they're, opportunities. They're the all around. Yeah, have become way bigger than they ever did with the the brands being together. The, the whole women's division on SmackDown. Yeah, as a whole. It's been it's been incredible. It just Raw has the talent. They just don't know how to use it in the three hour gap that they have. And they don't know how to create good storylines. They don't know how to do storyline Again, it's like you said, SmackDown's the wrestling show. Raw's just like the, the for the casuals to go and watch something entertaining. Okay, it's not it's not what we want it to be. And it's supposed to be the flagship show. Vince, you're doing it wrong. It should be the reverse thing. If you're gonna have SmackDown be the entertainment show, Raw should be the pure wrestling show. And that's if the show you want people to watch more, that's what you have to do. You have to roll reverse it a little bit. Or but, make both shows the same. Heaven forbid you make both shows the same. And you have two epic shows. But Vince always, always says all the time, I'm not in the professional wrestling business. I'm in the entertainment And business. I know you wanted competition, but this is not the way to do competition. Because right now, it's not your show, Vince Raw, is losing every single week to SmackDown. There's no competition whatsoever. Like, I understand he owns both. Which, I mean, at the end of the day, he probably doesn't give a fuck. But at the same point, it's making his flagship show that he always talks about and the longest reigning television show on television, weekly TV, is terrible. Garbage. And it showed with the brand split how, like, um, like bare their shelves really were of talent. Yeah. Because you look at the women's division, it had, like, four people in it. Yeah. And then um, it's just going to keep getting... Getting remade and remade. Same with the tag teams. Like they had to, they had to make a tag team of two singles wrestlers and Cesaro and Sheamus to get it over. It's bad. It's just, we get recycled garbage every goddamn week, 
And SmackDown just pr- just elevates every goddamn week. And I hope SmackDown is able to restock the shelves a bit too, because we're going to start seeing some repeat feuds on SmackDown as well with the tag teams. Yeah, and um, the women. But but since the brand split, we've had some good uh, some good notes. Uh, the pay per view return names, and, and it was they fell under SmackDown single brand pay per views. We had. Uh, uh, no Mercy and Backlash make their return pay-per-view names. Uh, different logos, but, you know, it still has a nostalgia being sort of the same. I mean, you don't have the same sets, but, you I know, wish, the, the I, names are back. I want the Backlash hooks, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had them also having TLC. Yeah. Uh, uh, Raw just feels too long, again. And they had the SmackDown adding 205 Live to, uh, the, I guess it's, it's almost labeled as the third hour of SmackDown because it's taped after SmackDown. Um but SmackDown wins 2016 since the split, 100%. I think I've only voted for Raw twice or three times through the entire yeah. brand split. This is our lowdown show, Brand Wars show. And that was probably a bias as hell pick when Sasha won the title fucking three times. Yeah. That was <laughs> probably it. Every uh, other week I picked SmackDown. Yeah, literally, because it's been the better show. Um, SmackDown's also helped veter- or the brand split's also helped veterans uh, shine. We've had The Miz that's benefited from the brand split. Braun Strowman. Who was becoming who an MVP this, like, of stooge, Raw? White stooge guy in the background. The last couple weeks, he's becoming like an MVP of Raw for some fucking reason. Yeah, uh, Bray Wyatt's benefited from it, uh, along with Luke Harper and the Wyatt family. Yeah, Randy Orton, Randy Wyatt. Yeah, uh, Dolph Ziggler again. He's getting finally getting. He's been getting those chances, even though he's lost them. But and then he, he's he getting won, more highlighted yeah, on SmackDown. And we had that that whole feud with Miz, and he put his career on the line if he didn't yeah, win the IC title. That was title. a great match. He won the IC title, then of course in classic Dolph Ziggler fashion loses it. Yep. Right before Survivor Series, where you're supposed to have this great match with Sami Zayn. Yep. They have uh, him lose to Miz. Zack Ryder winning that IC, uh, or Zack Ryder actually he's gotten a, he's gotten a big boost since the brand split uh, with Mojo Rawley. Because and- after he won the IC title, he, he lost it and then instantly became a jobber again. Yeah. So um, it was good. He just got injured again, which sucks. Yeah. But him and Mojo Rawley looked like they were going to be a promising tag team and mm-hmm. in, in, and a contender in the in the SmackDown tag team division. Uh, Slater and Rhino, we know the whole story with them. They've definitely benefited from the uh, Slater play. more he than Slater anybody. Went undrafted. And finally got his contract with got SmackDown. A, yeah, got way over with this whole I've got kids thing. Yeah. And him and Rhino, who we just saw at you know, House of Hardcore, we keep talking about it. Yeah. They became tag team champions. So it was, a good, it was a good underdog story to start SmackDown's tag team division. The Usos benefiting it from eventually, well, not off the start, but eventually going to the heel transition and becoming actually good. People actually love the heel Usos. So We love the heel Usos. Yeah. Uh, and... The last but not least, guy who's benefited from the brand split, Y two J. Our superstar of the year, if you want to if you want to spoil our um Slammy Awards. Yeah. Uh he's definitely like benefited from the brand split hundred percent. Like what he's done since then has been the best work he's ever done in the WB. The whole thing with the list, yeah, it, yeah, um stupid idiot. Like all these just it's like joke one liners have and this whole <laughs> list the list is more yeah. over than the universal title. <laughs> Like, what, what more can you say about Chris Jericho, man? The guy, the guy's the goat. That's the goat, yeah. right there. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree. <laughs> Maybe Styles in a couple yeah. years, he might be in the conversation. But the brand split has uh, produced other things too, as in our next topic here, the new titles. Uh, Raw has the Universal Championship now. Uh, we are kind of skeptical, and still, it's still growing on me. The name Universal Championship and that crappy um, red belt that they have with yeah. the crappy red type of red they use yeah, for that belt, it's, it's, and they shit all over that. The the good uh, Balor versus Rollins match, unfortunately, at Survivor Series, they shit all over it because they're just looking at this terrible title. Yeah, uh, SmackDown. Uh, they produced these. Uh, the brand was produced the SmackDown Women's Championship, which looks beautiful uh, on its own, even though it's just blue with like the red one on Raw. Um, the SmackDown Tag Team Titles, simple. All they did was I change love, the belt strap to blue, the, like a really really nice dark blue with I the love silver the plates. Blue they use. Um, now Ross copied it with the oh, yeah. red ones. Um, and 205 Live with the Cruiserweight Championship. I mean, I love that title belt. A lot of people don't really like it. I, I actually like a it. big fan of it. It goes um, along well with the purple theme they're using for yeah. the Cruiserweight. So theme. I love them all. And again, it's the universal name is still growing on me. Hopefully that gets better and gets more prestigious as it gets. It's a brand new belt. So, you know, it's got to build its prestige level. And the WWE World title still looks yeah. way better if yeah. you put them side by side. I would like them to change, like maybe do like a blue on the underneath the WWE, you know, like to have that little red swoosh. Yeah, maybe yeah. change that to blue. blue. Other than that, that's, like don't, don't touch it.